and a good summer Tuesday. And this is the last time I'm going to say this summer Tuesday morning, because next Tuesday it won't be a summer morning anymore. It'll be an Eagles reporting morning. Yes, the countdown is on. Let's be honest, the countdown was on the day after the Eagles lost to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl <laughs> back in February. So it was a lengthy countdown. We're now just one week away from Eagles football returning and the players reporting to uh, South Philadelphia. He's John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. We are Birds 365. we got two hours of Eagles talk coming your way with two good guests that we'll give you the details coming up on in just a second. Uh, Johnny Mack, we wait patiently for the Eagles to show up at the NFL as the 365 business that it is, does business every single day. And it was bad business yesterday for uh, the running back community in the NFL. Boy, they went nuts, Jody. Everybody chiming in. Tristan McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, you name it, everybody was chiming in. And Um, I can't say that I blame them. I'm just not sure there is a solution to those who believe that running backs are being shortchanged, screwed, use whatever adjective you feel you need to to describe the way that NFL running backs don't get paid the same way that some of their counterparts do. But I'm not sure there's anything that they can do about it. Is there, John? Well, I could have negotiated better in the CBA, I suppose, when it comes to the franchise tag, at least for the upper level players um you know there's a domino effect there with the franchise tag and look i mean quarterbacks get paid and certain positions get paid we all know and that sort of has a trickle down effect and it affects other less valuable positions and uh, it's supply and demand i mean you know a lot of the running backs went off on media people pointing out this kind of stuff and it's not Look, nobody, Matt Miller, who's a draft guy, got killed. Now, he tweeted out, been saying it for years. He's not the only one, by the way. Draft a running back, play the running back. If he's good, franchise the running back one time and then draft a running back again. Um, And then Austin Eckler, I think, was the first one. And and I want to read his tweet. This is the kind of trash that is artificially devalued one of the most important positions in the game. Everyone knows it's tough to win without a top running back, and yet they act like we are discardable widgets. I support any running back doing whatever it takes to get us back. Now, Austin, that was in response to Matt Miller's tweet. Matt, No no NFL GM is listening to Matt Miller. Uh, uh, Nobody. Nothing against Matt. Nobody. Nobody is listening. It's not our fault. Now, did Matt dehumanize things? Yes. And that's the part he's sort of like an analytics guy. That's the part I've always said that analytics guy, they don't get. They don't get Howie Roseman's job. It's a little bit more difficult than looking at your goofy numbers and because so, you have to deal with human beings. Mm-hmm. And they don't get that part of it. So they do dehumanize it. And that pisses people off who are obviously human beings. I get that part of it. And they should be pissed off when that kind of stuff happens. But nobody, nobody in the media is driving this. This is supply and demand. We go back to the Kansas City Chiefs. It, on the same team, they took a first-round pick in a, 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 on a running back. It hasn't necessarily worked out with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. And they win a Super Bowl with a seventh round pick and it right. was a big impact on the game, Isaiah Pacheco. The problem is the difference between the great running backs and the, what do you want to call them, middle range running backs is not that great. So when you start talking about how do you build a successful team? Well, you got to have a quarterback. You got to pay a quarterback. You got to pay the edge rushers. You got to pay the receivers in a in a explosive offensive game. Then you got to play the cornerbacks because you got to guard the receivers. And it, all of a sudden, it starts to trickle down and trickle down. And there's no more room for a position where, look, are the Eagles better with Miles Sanders than this group they have right now? Probably. But to what degree? Not a great degree. So, you know, you make those sort of decisions 
And that's where supply and demand. There's too many good running backs. There's a there there's a significant supply, and the demand is not as great because there's a bunch of teams that could use Dalvin Cook. I think we could all agree on that, even if you want to point to numbers and say he's declining. Right now, on this snapshot, on this day, he's better than a heck of a lot of running backs who are projected to be starters. But you don't – what's the difference? What It's not that great to where you're going to bend over backwards to spend $10 million on a guy like that who's used to making $12 million, by the way. And then you start talking about, we always joke about, Saquon Barkley might be the biggest difference on his particular team. Right. Um, but, but what is the difference, really? Are, are they going to win? A, I, I got to watch Adrian Peterson in his prime. Unbelievable. One of the greatest pure runners that ever lived. Honestly. Um, what the Vikings do with him? You know, they made the playoffs a bunch of time. He he won an MVP, which is unbelievable. Even in that, he was so good. He 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 dragged Christian Ponder to the playoffs, which is you should go in the Hall of Fame just for that. That's how bad Christian Ponder was. Um, but it, it, the the and, and we talked about it with our list of top twenty five Eagles. Nobody's arguing with you. I'm not going to argue that Jalen Hurts isn't the most important player on the Eagles because he is. Um, the value of the position is so disjointed. It, it's it, it has nothing to do with the media. It all it has to do with supply and demand. And NFL teams think they can get running mm. back that are nearly as effective as Saquon Barkley's of the world, Josh Jacobs of the world, um, or, or, or who am I forgetting off the top of my head? The third Tony Pollard also, Tony Pollard, um, you know, Mm. and they're not wrong by the way, Jody, they're not wrong. you, You kind of touched on it, John, and we'll go a step further. You mentioned both guys. The NFL is a copycat league, has been forever. All sports are, and people look at the teams that have the most success and say, what can we borrow from them to apply to our team to see if we can get to that level? Last year's two Super Bowl teams, Isaiah Pacheco, seventh-round draft pick, best runner for the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl, Miles for the Eagles, although he didn't have a great Super Bowl game, was the guy who helped them get the <clears> Super Bowl all year long. Uh-oh, free agency, you got to actually pay him good money. Now we're going another direction. The two teams that were in last year's championship game showed you how they handled the running back position. It's just another spot. And if it gets a little expensive in a capped world, we're going to look to go somewhere else where we can get close to the same production but pay significantly less. That's the ep- harsh economic realities of the NFL these days. It's going to take something drastic to change it. Uh, you and I have discussed this shoot since Birds 365 started because the league was already trending in that direction. You're going to see star players on the high school level. You tell me after going out to watch that seven on seven camp, man, this is like the, the cutting wave, the, the new wave of football everything about skill positions, and most of it about throwing the football, that they're just not running the football. The best running players in high school football these days are the quarterbacks who both throw it and take off and run it every once in a while so they can be like Jalen Hurts when they get to the NFL. Nobody's going to want to play running. you got a 14-year-old kid who's got some size to him at age 14, comp to the other 14-year-old kids. If you're any kind of a coach or a dad, you're telling them, get outside, get ready to get down the field. You better be able to catch, son, because just being able to make somebody miss on a tackle in the backfield is not going to be best for you for your football career. If we think you're going to be an NFL talent at age 14, you better be a wide receiver because you don't want to be a running back because the NFL is trending away from it. So it's gonna if it's ever gonna turn the t- the tide's gonna turn and go back in the other direction. One guy is gonna have to be so much better than everybody else that you're looking for that unicorn at that position. That's why I continue to say there's a whole hell of a lot of pressure on Bijan Robinson this year. 
because leading into the draft, he was, again, this is just opinion and scouting and everything else until he actually does it. He hasn't done it. He was talked about as a once every five year, once every 10 year type back that he was that talented. That's why he went as high in the draft as he did. Certainly the NFL's feelings about running back could be seen through the draft over the last five, eight, 10 years. They just don't take running backs high. They took Bijan pretty high. And the scouting reports and people's opinions are that he was special, that he's different. So this year, not only is he carrying the Atlanta Falcons and their fates and fortunes, he's carrying the future of the running back position in the National Football League. So good luck to you, Bijan. Yeah. Everybody wanted you here in Philadelphia. You'll be down in Atlanta with the Falcons, but everyone in there, or at least Jody McDonald will be, and I think a lot of others will join me, will be watching what you do because, yeah, that's the only way this swings back, John, is if there's a guy who comes in and like that, yeah, he's the but, best uh, running back in the NFL. Boy, I mean, we've already been through it. I brought up one guy. I mean, is he going to be better than Peterson? Uh, good luck with that. I mean, he might be he'll be a better receiver. Uh, he's not going to be a better runner. Uh, I'm pretty confident in stating that. Um, we've been through it with Elliot, who was a tremendous player for the short sample size. I don't think the problem is the draft. Remember, Jameer Gibbs got drafted number 12 now. No, I think probably that, got that, that's the, just a reach by that's, the Lions. Yeah, that's an overdraft. We'll, we'll be second guessing the Lions on that yeah, one for a while. I mean, that's clearly an overdraft simply because even if he turns out to be a star player, I mean, you could have gotten him later. So it doesn't make sense no matter what. But um, it, 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 we, we've had these players in the past. And as Matt pointed out, I go back to Matt, that th the first contract is not the issue, the second contract is the issue. If you get a great player, Bijan turns into a great player. The Falcons are all good in the first contract. It's the second contract. Now, where are they? Because it doesn't matter if he turns into that generational player. Because if you don't have a quarterback, you're still not winning. So you still got to find a way to get a quarterback. Um, and then you got to pay the running back. Let's use Christian McCaffrey money because he's already got the He's the one running back who got paid. Um, and we've already seen Christian. I was just talking to our, our buddy Colin Thompson the other day. Now, I mean, Christian McCaffrey is raved about around this league as a but not only by um, you know, his his executives and scouts and the Eagles were gonna take him in the 27, and that's the Eagles. Um, remember, that's that's how highly they thought of him. Um, but amongst his peers, he's one of those guys that's sort of like set apart and they go, wow, he's, he's really good. Um, all right. He is, but what, what is he? He's certainly a big part of San Francisco and then moving forward. He was certainly a big part of Carolina when he was healthy. He had tremendous seasons. It's not getting you over the top. It's just not, I mean, you got to have so many other things, and then it's like, oh, we got a great running back. That's a luxury. That's a luxury. That's what it is. And it's nice to have, but if a running back is your best player, we just went through the best player list, and your quarterback is not in the top 25, you're in deep trouble. Yeah. You're in deep, deep trouble. Well, if if that's the case, then John has just anointed the Eagles as the champions of the NFC because he's saying that the 49ers can't beat the Eagles because their best player is their running back. And you can't win if your best player is your running back. Yeah, that, no, I didn't say that. I said if if your best player is a running back and your quarterback isn't top 25 on your team, you're not winning. That's what I said. You, you, you know, if you have a top-tier quarterback and a top-tier running back, great it's a great luxury to have you can win a lot but <laughs> if you don't have if, if if brock purdy isn't healthy or, or craps the bed and trey lance isn't healthy or doesn't play or craps the bed and sam darnold craps the bed yeah san francisco's got no shot even if christian mccaffrey plays at an all pro level that's what i'm saying yeah we need to further define craps the bed um I, you know, I think Purdy's going to be really good, so I don't think it's going to be uh, a well, factor. Well, really good. Forming. They're relevant. 
Right. He's really good. That's that, that, that it's not, but he's the more uh, important part of the equation. Christian's going to play like an all pro if he's healthy. That's how good he is. It doesn't matter. As I said, if your quarterback, think about top 25, Jody, you got 22 starters. If your quarterback's not one of your top 25 players, he's not a, re, he's not a, 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 a deserving to be a starter. You're not. Well, you're talking about in, in on that individual team. I thought you were talking about top twenty five in the league at no, their position. On that individual team, if your quarterback stinks, I was using my example of uh, uh, over at SI of over top twenty five Eagles players. If you have a great running back and you have a great quarterback, that's a tremendous luxury to have. But if you have a great running back and your quarterback is Marcus Mariota, for instance, the backup. You're not winning anything, anything. The Atlanta Falcons aren't winning anything with B. John Robinson turning into a generational mm. player unless Desmond Ritter proves he is a, a a top 10, top 15 quarterback. Yeah, which uh, now top 10, top 15 quarterback. Are you talking about a top 10 player on the Falcons or a top 10, 15 quarterback in the league quarterbacks compared to each other? Quarterbacks compared to each other okay. in that example, um, you have to be, you have to be a top tier quarterback, and and fifteen is stretching it. I, I you know fifteen is stretching it, even with a great running back. Top ten, maybe, maybe you can win. Maybe you can get to the divisional round. Maybe if you have a great day on a particular Sunday. Maybe you can make a run top five. Yeah. Then obviously you're in, in the equation, but it, it's, it's a really small margin. If you're, if you're building a team around your running back, you're in trouble. You're in trouble in the modern NFL. That we can agree because quarterback has been so far and away the most dominant position for a long time. Now it, takes a really gutsy general manager to say, all right, we're going to pay our running back and we'll try and make it up as we go along in the quarterback. But the 49ers might be one of those teams that can do it because Purdy's on that rookie contract. Then you can't pay him anyway, so you're just going to hope that he lives up to the kind of rankings that we're talking about here, even though he's not getting paid. He's John McMullen. I'm Jody McDonald. I see our first guest is ready to join us. One of our best pals and the guy who does as good a job as anybody with he joins us from the 3013.com and jacobsports.com. Longtime Eagles beat writer Paul Domwich joins us next here on Birds 365.